Då kör vi igång Bajenpodden 488 här från Bagis, vår studio. Och välkommen, ska du vara, Tack. Janis, igen. Det är ändå igen. nästan. Ja, jag blir nästan ja. trött på det. Vi får pausa lite, tror jag. Ja, Efter det här. ja jag känner det också. Det är det sista jag gör, kanske. <laughs> ja. Välkommen, Marty. Tack så mycket. För att du ställde upp här och kom. Tack, tack. Nu när du blåser lite. lite. <laughs> tack. Och förlåt för min dålig svenska. Nej, det är bara bra. Ja. Det, det blir bra, ja. det blir bra. Ja. Verkligen inte dålig. Ja. Och Micke, ja. välkommen. Ja, tackar. Jag har ja. hållit mig undan nu att här är ett tag. Men, ja. men, det när jag... synd att inte du var här i fredags. Ja, jag följde ju på live. Jag var med i hela sändningen. Och det kan vara det stökigaste jag sett på Youtube. Utav alla klipp på hela Youtube. <laughs> men det var underhållning. Ja, ja. Nej, men det är ju det vi jobbar med. Absolut, absolut. <laughs> Målet är att ha roligt. Va? Ja, precis. Mm. Ja, men kul att du kom hit och hälsade på oss. Nu när det, absolut, ett, a pleasure. Ja, pleasure. När det blir lite Europaspel och grejer. Så vi tänkte att vi skulle gå in på det. Och lite så. så vi kör väl igång på, på en gång va? Ja, precis. Så tänkte jag bara fråga dig lite så här. Hur, hur din levnadssituation i, i i Sverige har du familj här och allt sånt eller top flott i think um, i guess you know that my wife um, in fru uh, is she's from Uxellosund so uh, for us it was as well a good reason to as well come okay. back to Sweden yeah. and uh, yeah have a twillinger so they are almost three mm. busy at home as well mm. uh, <laughs> double trouble but they are doing they are doing well and and we really like sweden we really like stockholm mm. and yeah, i always say i i enjoy a lot my first time in sweden and i'm doing that as well now mm. so it's always nice to be here mm. do you talk uh, swedish or spanish with your children i prata katalanska faktisk aha okay katalansk okay. so uh, i don't think that they understand nothing at all yet <laughs> okay <laughs> because they go obviously to the kindergarten kindergarten yeah. in swedish uh, the, the mom is talking to them in in swedish mm. but uh, i try i try it's something that i feel proud as well and hopefully they can learn uh, sure. more than one or two languages yeah yeah bro bro du uh, vi börjar direkt med med silly tänkte jag silly season ja uh. vi har ju fått in en ny som heter mark Ginares, är det, mm. är det rätt? Ja, det är bra. Ja, det är du ser, jag bra. kan. Du kan, du kan. Men vad, vad är det för typ av spelare? We have been looking uh, for a while on what kind of uh, fullback we wanted to, to, to get. Um, as you know, it's an important position for our way of playing. And in that sense, I think that we made a good analysis together with Jan Berg on what are the skills that we were looking for. And I think that after analyzing different profiles mark fits almost all the i would say all the boxes um he's a he has a good left foot good passing game both in short and long and, and long passing um defensively he's an stable player both in 1v1 and when it comes to coverings when it comes to to situations that he needs to defend quite high into jams and so on and then as well uh, he has uh, this ability to to drive the ball forward to to yeah what we call ball carriers that they can drive the ball uh, framot and then uh, he has a good left foot for uh, fast as to honor mm-hmm. that it's something that as well we thought could be an extra but uh, very well welcome extra so uh, we're very convinced he's only 23 he comes from he has been in Villarreal he has been in in good clubs i would say in terms of of uh, of uh, the level of trainings and the concepts he can get there and so on so then the only not question mark but the only challenge he will face is the adaptation is a new country is a new league is a new uh, language for him so we're going to try to do our best to help him but um, i think we are we are confident that he can be a good player for us är han fysiskt redo att uh, gå in i matchspel redan nu eller behöver han tid på sig att komma igång? We probably he gonna need uh, a couple of weeks, three weeks to get in 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 full shape. Uh, he's coming as you know the Spanish season uh, was over in 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 June, be- late May, I would say last week of May and then uh, he has been on holiday. So um, all the talks we had with his former physical coaches is that he's a player that doesn't need a lot of time to get in good shape. He's naturally 
good physically, but he will need to uh, to train at least a couple of weeks, uh, two and a half, three weeks, before he's ready for basically to avoid injuries. Hur, hur länge har ni studerat honom? Hur länge har ni följt? No, he's a player that I think we we knew about him uh, for I wouldn't say so long time ago, but he was one of the fullbacks that that we had on the list. Um, then the situation was that he was under contract in Albacete, mm. so usually it's not easy for all Svenskan teams to get second division players in Spain. First, because the salaries are quite high there, and second, because all the players in in those leagues when they play in Championship in, mm. in the second division in Spain or in second division in Italy, all of them have the dream to mm. do the jump to the first division for because sure. then both financially and from a sporting point of view is so attractive. But then it changed a little bit, so Albacete was more eager to let's say to get rid of him to yeah. sell him and then the the situation happened but um yeah i think that jelmer uh, me we agreed that that he could be a player with the skills we needed ja oh. eh, har du är det någon eh, spelare som du kände till innan vem det här var eller eh, var det någonting som du har varit och kolla på eller är det bara video eller vad ska jag säga, data analys. Yeah, we have analyzed everything about him, about ah. the data and about uh, mm. the impact. Um, these things about data, I think, is very important nowadays in a, in, a, in a professional football club to use data to scout the play as well. Mm. But it's always a, an exercise that, that requires talent, if you want, mm -hmm. uh, quality. And that's why there are very good uh, scouting, very good sporting directors. Uh, otherwise, it will be very easy just to look at chart mm -hmm. or to look at a diagram and say, oh, this is the player we need. It's not like this. So I think that we need to make the exercise about many times mm -hmm. those this data explains what actually you can see, mm -hmm. the way he's playing in a certain team, in a certain way of playing. Of course, it shows trends. So that's why it's important to look at this data. But uh, even I think the best sporting directors in the world, they always say the same, that data is just a, an extra mm -hmm. to support what then you think about the player. Mm -hmm. But it's very important just to watch him. I don't know, we try to analyze how, he, how the players are doing when the result is against or how they play in the last minutes of the games or if they change their way of playing when they play away or at home. So all those things are things that in a professional club mm -hmm. we, we, we try to do. Det är ju svårt att eh, få in data på att klara vad ska man säga, pressen från klubben och fansen. Det är ju svårt att få på data också, alltså en personlighet. Att man klarar att spela för en stor klubb till exempel. F förstår du? Ja, yeah, yeah, absolut. Ja, ja. And I think that it's needed to, to look at data. Don't misunderstand me. Ja. So I think that it's, it's part of the, of the process mm. of the progress in football. That's the reason why top clubs are spending mm. a lot of money and to have a specialist on this area. Uh, don't misunderstand me. What I'm saying is that data can be a filter mm, about yes. what kind of players do we need mm. and can be a support when you see a player to understand certain behaviors. Mm. But I, I think it will be... I, I, I've seen a lot of clubs that are hard, let's say, data-driven yeah. mm. and it's not working that well for them. Mm. Uh, and of course, some cases might be that it works well. But uh, I think that the why football is not that easy. Uh, obviously, all of us we have different opinions, isn't it? Uh, uh, we have different opinions. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I think that the, the, the football is very complex because it's 11 v 11, big pitch. Yeah. It's not like baseball. Yes. It's not a static game like even, I don't know, uh, American football. Yes. It's just five seconds yeah. and you know that there are, you can almost control the game. In football, football is complex. Mm. And it's complex doesn't mean difficult. It's easy. You just put the ball on, on the net. Is it like this? Jag skulle bara behöva stanna till lite här. Har ni har ni pratat om mig eller har du sett på Bayern på den tidigare? I'm aware. I, I try to do always my job. So I scout, especially when I play away. So I did I did the research and uh, yeah, I, I forgot my my boxing uh, gloves here in Austria. But I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for to take the. Vad är det för sånt? Det är Exactly. Exactly. Precis. Precis. You've been here now 18 months about. Hur mycket har du varit med och bestämt om de spelare som vi har plockat in förra sommaren, på vintern och nu? Hur, hur, hur mycket är din påverkan? I think that I said that many times. One of the reasons why I wanted to come to Hammarby, if not the main one, was because I really liked the squad okay. we had in 2022. Okay. Uh, because um, I was doing well in Denmark. 
Super League, Danish Super League is a strong league. Yes. And we had we were in fourth position, third position when I was leaving Olborg. Olborg is a fantastic club, a big club in Denmark with a lot of history. Um, we're doing well. We turn it. I start really bad, and at the end of 12 months, uh, I think that even the supporters start to like me. Uh, so I, I could manage. <laughs> I could manage to to convince them. Um, then Hammer became with this. I would say amazing project because uh, as you know I've been in Sweden before in 2017 2018 yeah. and I knew about Hammarby how big it is even before when I was in Spain but I think that Hammarby is facing a fantastic moment uh, what I see the evolution the progress that the club has made in the last four or five years from becoming a, a club with such an amazing history with those values this has not changed but at the same time now adding the possibility to perhaps try to perform at the at the top level and the ambition to be a top Scandinavian club not only in Sweden but in Scandinavia so that was very attractive for me and then when I look at the kind of players that that Jasper with Jelmberg the club was doing in the last years for me that was very attractive because I said that many times not all the clubs could have picked Darian Bojanic or could dare to sign Mohana Jasse then for me we were looking for stability I said that that was very important. Already in the first summer window, unfortunately, we lost some players that perhaps we didn't want to. Uh, and then the same happened last winter. But why is that? Because Hammarby now is in a moment that perhaps we have never been before there. Now players like, like for instance, I just mentioned Darian Bojanic. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, he played his best season ever yes. in 2022. Yes the most complete in terms of performing week and every, uh, after weekend, scoring points, scoring more goals than ever, making more points than perhaps ever. So I think his impact in the game, but it took some years until he arrived there. Once he arrived to this level, not only for Hammerby, I would say for almost every Scandinavian club, it's very difficult to keep certain players mm -hmm. because at some moment you need to accept that they are looking for either money or bigger leagues. So this balance is what I think one of the challenges that we have right now. But if you ask me, I would have liked to keep more continuity. Yes, but it's not a, now whatever I will say, it's going to go against me. But <laughs> it's not that I don't like the players we have. I love all the players we have right now. But obviously continuity, usually, not always, but usually, it helps to create a, a better foundation to perform week after week after week. And this is in almost every sport. But the play we did bring in, mm. how much influence did you have on the choices of the play we actually recruited? I think that Hammarby has been always very clear that doesn't want to be coach-driven, which mm. I fully respect. And, and when we start to speak, that was very clear, both from Jesper and from the club. Mm. At the same time, I tried to give my opinion. Um, sometimes <laughs> and they listen more to me than, than others, but uh, I think that the way I'm trying to to explain to the club, and I think we are getting there, is that for me, a coach is one of the most important decisions that a club can make to pick the choice, mm. to choose, uh, to choose the, the coach. Once you choose the coach, then you need to buy into those ideas because this coach is the reflection of the strategy that the club has. Mm. Uh, said that, I always say the same for me. Is for instance, we are looking for, I don't know, for a right winger. What skills do we, I think we need in that winger to play the football that we want to play mm. that I think can give us more probabilities? to win games. Men där är vi, då måste jag bara säga att där är vi överens för det är exakt samma sak som jag har sagt att nu ska vi då vara tränarstyrda. Jag tycker precis som det du säger att, att tränaren måste få de verktygen för att kunna leverera den fotbollen som han har visionen av att kunna spela. Och då måste man ta intrycket av att tränas önskelista eller önskan. I don't want to say that the coach should give a list of players because I think it's wrong. I spend a lot of time on designing trainings, on preparing the games. So if there is people who are 100% of the time looking for players, I think it's more healthy and actually more efficient that I can give sometimes a name as a reference of, okay, I like this kind of player for this position. But at the end, I think that it's good for the club that the club says, okay, we know what skills we are looking for, then we use the data, then we use all the scouting network that we have, and then we try to find the best profiles for what we are looking for. Those profiles should be aligned with the strategy of the club. Mm -hmm. yes. And then there is no doubt that, that sometimes in all the clubs in the world, some signings will go well, 
some signings will not go because this happens in Real Madrid, in Manchester United and everywhere. Some signings are a big success and some doesn't. But um, I think I think that the club has been very clear into into how they want to work and I have full respect for that. Mm. Oh. Min? Oh. 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 Check that. Ah, okay. Ah, 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 okay, okay. No? Better? Okay. So. Ja. Bort bra. Vad bra. Håll kvar positionerna där. Det är dåligt från Morsten. Absolut, absolut. Ja, ja, så visst nog. Doesn't matter what I say. Funkar <laughs> Bra. Ja, men, okay. det, det jag ville säga var att jag, jag kanske inte menar att du som huvudtränare ska leverera namnen. Men jag tänker till exempel om du får, får ut den fotbollen eller den som du vill och säger att jag behöver till exempel en, en högerfotad högerytter som jag vill att han ska gå på utsida. Mm. Om klubben då hittar en som är mer inverterad, vänsterfotad, mm. men de tycker att hans data är bättre och värvar honom, det, då går det lite emot den fotbollen du skulle vilja spela. Förstår du vad jag tänker? 100 procent. But um, I think that I think One example that I can give is, for instance, when I arrived to the club. I think we were quite clear. We agreed with, with the club that we needed a number six, because in my opinion, the squad in 2022, uh, or at least in 2021, had not a clear number six. Jeb Anderson could do this, mm -hmm. Darren could do this, but in my opinion, they were better a little bit higher on the pitch mm -hmm. or a little bit with more capacity to run according to the way I like to play. This six is more positional. Mm -hmm. It's a play that should be a skill on the build-up, that should be good in stopping counters, that should be good in to uh, balance the team in counter situations. This is the main role. And then we agreed that we needed a six. Then we define the role and then we bring Loret Sadiku, which especially Jasper knew him, but we thought that he was a good player. Mm -hmm. Then we agreed that we needed perhaps another offensive midfielder. And then, according to the skills we were looking, I mentioned one name, that it was Nahir Besara. Mm. Nahir Besara, everybody knew, knew him, so it was not new, especially for you guys in Hammarby, but for everyone in Sweden. Um, he is the kind of offensive midfielder that I like to have in the teams. But I didn't know Nahir Besara, like working with him, or <laughs> it's just that he fits some of the boxes mm. in this offensive midfielder position. It's a situation where the bro goes down, pa, 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 mm. everything fits, and we can bring Nahir Besara in a good deal, mm. actually a very good deal mm. for Hammarby. But if the club, as it happened before, I can suggest a name, if the club thinks that this doesn't fit, it's mm. fair. Okay. It's yeah. fair. Then we try to, to look for other profiles. At the end, the last decision is not, is not the coach in Hammarby, and that's, and that's fair, mm. and that's okay. I accept it like, like this. So um, that's what I can say about the process. Mm. Du tänkte på, är det någonting som du känner att du saknar idag? Jag vet, man vill ju alltid ha bättre spelare och så vidare. Men är det någonting som du känner, som, den här spelartypen skulle du vilja ha just nu? Liksom? I think first of all we need to understand where we are. Mm. And this is perhaps where I'm more critical with myself mm. and how we as a club we could have done it. Mm. The expectations in Hammarby always and you know better than me, are high because it's a club that attracts a lot of interest. Yeah. But especially the last four, three, five years, it has been growing because financially, mm -hmm. Hammarby is now in a position that perhaps had never been. And the ambitions, according to that, has been more clear than ever. Mm. The club wants to be top three, not only in Sweden, but hopefully a top, uh, top Scandinavian club, mm. uh, which means that the expectations from everybody involved are high. Mm. I think that when in, during this winter we had a lot of talks, a lot, and sometimes disagreements mm. about how to change a little bit the strategy on mm. how to get there. Mm. I think that the vision is perfect. The vision to make Hammarby a younger team is something that I discuss before my arrival. Mm. I said, I think that in my way of understanding the construction, the designing of a squad, it doesn't make sense, my opinion, to have old foreign players unless they make the difference, unless they are very top players, or sometimes you have a specific cases, very specific, where perhaps it's cultural leaders, yes. players that can have a fantastic influence for the, for the dressing room or that has a value for, because they have been here for a lot of years, whatever it is. But usually I would say that these squad players, I prefer that are coming from the academy. So I think that Hammer in the position we are right now, we should be able to 
to get players from the academy that can fulfill. I don't like to work in that way, but to 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 talk in the way, but the number 16, 17, 18, 19 in the squad. Mm -hmm. I think it doesn't make sense to bring a right fullback from somewhere else. If if with the level we have in the academy today, we should be able to get this. If we have two players per position, as I usually like, that this second guy is a guy from the academy, and then. When we have these two players, perhaps this one is a top recruitment and this is the academy player. It's up to them. Eh? Mm -hmm. We cannot promise this guy who will play because he's was just expensive. If the academy player deserves to play, he plays mm -hmm. for sure. So I think that this is a bit part of the as well the, the development of the young players that they face the competition. Why I'm saying all this? Because I'm aware that we took a, a very big decision when it comes to make the squad much, much younger in a moment last winter where we were losing some of our best key players. That's a fact. Could we have done something different to not lose those players? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I guess that it was very difficult to keep Mohana Jasa, to keep Darian Bojanic. In my opinion, Jasa was the best left fullback in all Svenskan 2022. Is it possible to keep the best player in his position when he was 25, I think, last season? In, in Sweden. Is it possible? I think it's hard because usually bigger clubs, bigger leagues will knock the door and then how you cope with that. Uh, a little bit the same with Gura. Gura, in my opinion, he has been fantastic player in Hammarby for the last, for all the years he has been here basically. But perhaps his last season was the one that he, he made his best numbers at least. So he was 29. He wanted to try something new. Uh, last uh, year on his contract, or it was very difficult. So then, time will tell us if we took the right decisions when we were drastically into making the team. I think we are four years younger than last season, as an average. We are the second team with a younger team in the pitch, in the pitch, playing minutes. Mm -hmm. Only Sirius has a younger team than us. Uh, in the long term, I think that this is the right decision. We should have explained, perhaps, that it is not easy, not impossible, but it is not easy to perform at the same level when we had a team last season that was playing together for some time, that had some players at the top. And we need to remember that Gustav Ludwigsson, when he arrived to Hammarby, he was not that top the first six months or first year. That the same a little bit with Mohanet Jasse. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that Mohanet reached his peak in the last two seasons, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I arrived to Hammarby, I was told, no, but Mohana as a wing back in five at the back, yes, but four at the back, he struggled defensively. Mm. And he did a fantastic season defensively as well. So I think that just players sometimes, they need time. And then I take responsibility by the fact that obviously my job is to make sure that those players need the less time, the better to perform at the best. But sorry, I'm not a magician. Sometimes things just take take time. Going into this season with the squad we had and the uh, younger uh, average age of the squad that we have. Did you still feel you and the coaching team, not only you, and the team behind you that, okay, top three is the, our goal still with this new kind of squad that we have? Was that still the goal or was it like, uh, maybe not? Uh, I think that the board uh, wants, wish that we can get there. Mm. I think that we had a lot of discussions with, with as well, with Jasper about if it was... <laughs> a realistic uh, target and how much pressure this could put in our players. Yes. Um, I'm always an optimistic person and I try to say, okay, if that's what you want, let's go for it. Then time will tell us if that was the right decision or not. Sometimes I know that, that we discuss about, oh, but why Kalmar or why, uh, I don't know, Beppe last week and why. Mm -hmm. I think that it's more difficult to play, but not in Hammarby, in all the big clubs, when you are not achieving the expectations it's much more difficult to perform than not when you're in a small team and you are kind of no pressure, overachieving if you want. Um, I've been there. Eh? I've been in Sandefjord yeah. with the lowest budget in the league and being in 10th position, we were kings of, of the world almost. Like, because you feel no pressure. You feel, okay, we are, we are overachieving. So I think that what we experience with a, such a young team is it easy, is easy for Yusuf Aravi uh, carry all the responsibility to be the number nine in a team that open, openly speaks just about being top three, about we should win every game, we should... It's not easy, or for Marcus Carlson or for Hammer, or even let's think about Fenger, Nahir and those guys that suddenly they lost 
some of the players that they were playing together. And now, okay, we need to find new relations because in some way we we change seven, eleven starting players. People speak a lot about Simon Sandberg, about Mohanet, about Darian, about Gura. I think Berisha doesn't matter what you think, guys. I think he was a fantastic striker, even though now things are not going that well for him in Molde. For me, it was a really good striker for our way of playing. And then we can speak about the way some people judge his performance. Uh, but he was an important player for us. Another one was Jeppe Anderson. Jeppe last season, perhaps in the in the memories, ah, he was not 11 starting because we play always Loren, Nahir, Darian. But the reality is that Jeppe played a lot of 11 starting minutes and he was a very important player for us. Ricard Magyar, when Ricard Magyar was not injured, he was 11 starting. And I remember his first seven, eight games his level was, for me, top in the league as a central back. And then, unfortunately, he got this injury and it was not easy for him. But replacing these very important players at the same time, this is not easy. And I think that, sorry, just to finish, uh, people that work in professional football is more aware of that than perhaps Bayern family. Because as a, as a supporter, you are passionate and you want immediate deliver and you want to make things work uh, yesterday. But I think that people in the in football they understand that that is not easy. No, det, det tror jag vi gör också, även om vi låter det morra ibland. Men en grej som jag tänker på som tränare så skriver man ju oftast tre års kontrakt och det brukar ofta vara första säsongen börjar vi med basic grunderna, nästa säsong försöker vi bygga på lite idéer och tredje. Och jag tänker förra året när du kommer in, du sätter försvaret jättebra, vi sätter ett grundspel. Sen försvinner då bärande spelare. Blir det inte då lite att man får börja om? För jag tycker att vi har skruvat väldigt mycket på taktiken och spelet mot hur vi avslutade förra säsongen. När vi spelade mycket med en treback i boll när Jas lyfte och Kurtulus gick, spelade mer centrerat högerback. Det spelet tyckte jag personligen såg jätte, jätteintressant på. Jag hoppades att vi skulle bygga vidare på det. Sen under försäsongen i år och även kuppen så tycker jag att vi har spelat mycket. Det känns som att vi har frångått den höga pressen. Vi har gått lite mer till ett mellanblock. Vi spelar med två defensiva. Förra året tyckte det var lite mer 4-1-4-1 när vi inte hade bollen. Jag tycker ändå att vi har skruvat en hel del. Är det för att du försöker spela på spelarnas styrkor eller är det för att det här var nästa steg att du liksom förstår vad jag menar? Eller? Ja. I, think, I think the challenge as a coach is always this one. I would say that 99% of coaches we have a, an idea on how to play the football we want because we think that this is the football that can help us to win games. That's for sure. We are here to win games. Uh, said that, there is always a balance between you cannot be naive. It's not the same to have a certain kind of fullback than another one. You, you cannot play the same with an, uh, just to give an example, Astrid Selmani as a nine is different than Villiot as a nine or, I don't know, uh, Yusuf Arabi as a nine. These are three different types of number nines. So my job is build an identity that is one of the reasons why Hammarby signed me and asked me to be the coach, to build a playing identity aligned with the club strategy. And on the other hand, balance this with the skills of the players that I have. And on this balance, uh, it's very easy to be a Monday coach. Because if we adjust too much and it works not so well, some people will say that we lose identity. Mm -hmm. But if we don't, doesn't adjust that much because we want to keep, let's say, training and growing in a certain way of playing, then if it doesn't work, it's because we are too stocked in a certain way of playing. So this balance is, is the one that makes us coaches good or bad. And, and right now we are in a moment where there is a power of teaching these players and, and training and playing in a, in a way that we think in the long term will be the best one to win games, plus finding the small adjustments according to the qualities of the players, plus that we can compete in the best way we can, we know, every week. That's the balance. And this balance is not easy. Nej, och det som jag tänkte lägga till lite där, då med tanke på om vi säger säsong 1, säsong 2, säsong 3, och nu när vi går mot ett yngre lag, unga spelare som gör det bra kommer ju troligtvis försvinna från Hammarby också. Så det är ju verkligheten vi lever i, att vi är en säljande liga i Sverige. Så då tänker jag, som tränare måste det ibland kännas frustrerande för jag tänker att du vill vinna matcher, du vill vinna titlar, du vill... Och det, det kan vara att man är på gång upp, två steg fram och så ett steg bak och så ska man börja om. 
Så, så min fråga är egentligen lite, kan det vara, jag förstår att du för klubben kan vara bra på längre sikt och spela in många unga spelare. Som tränare kan det kännas frustrerande? If, 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 if you want me to be honest, of course, I came, I came to Hammarby with certain ambitions and with a certain plan. The plan of the club was for these next three seasons to try to win titles or at least to, to make it into Europe. And suddenly I felt that we changed quite a lot the strategy, but the vision I think is totally right for Hammarby. So then uh, I have two positions, either just to say that this is not for me, hey do, or just to commit with the club that that's the decision I took, uh, because this is not about me, it's not about uh, Martí Cifuentes what he wants, is I think that I'm getting paid to be the best coach that Hammarby can have. So I could say a lot of populist things in every press conference just to make sure that you are more happy with me or that this guy understands he's more happy with me. But is this the best for Hammarby? Perhaps it's not. So what I need to do is to protect Hammarby. And what I need to do is to try to be, sometimes I will make it and sometimes not, to be the best coach that I can for this club. Because that's what I think I'm paid for. I don't know if I was, uh, I don't know, Pep Guardiola, I would say, ah, you know what? No, this is not for me. But at the end, it's not that I won three Champions League to set here the months. So what I said is, okay, I commit with this. Perhaps it will be tough. Perhaps it, we will receive a lot of critics as it's happening right now. But I'm trying to do the best job I can for this club because that's what I want to do. Was it a difficult decision for you to take? It was a lot of talks about it. Um, and once again, I'm happy in Sweden. I'm happy in Stockholm. My dream, um, and you know that I had offers to leave, I had very good offers to leave, but my dream, and perhaps I'm very stubborn, but my dream was to come to Hammarby and win a title. <laughs> får, jag, får jag bara avsluta? För det, det kanske lät som att jag på något sätt ja, ville på något sätt måla in det att hörn. Det var absolut inte det. Min poäng var, för jag kollade lite när du var på väg till oss, kollade upp det lite hur du såg ut i Sandefjord och Aalborg. Och andra säsongerna i båda klubbarna var ju det som egentligen var tycker jag då i alla fall utifrån det jag såg kändes väldigt väldigt framgångsrikt. Jag tänkte Ålborg jag kollade den matchen Luka Pripp var ju helt on fire, Kasper Kusk jättebra. Iver Fossum trodde jag att du skulle ta med dig till Hammarby för han tycker klass. Men, men det kändes som att andra säsongen där lossnade det. Alla målen förutom två in i boxen. Mm. De andra två var precis på Bra. boxen. Mm. Så att jag tänker det är därför då att nu är det andra säsongen där det kanske och du, det kanske känns som att det här är första gången du kanske får ta ett litet steg bak, vilket kanske sporrar också och utmanar. I think your point is totally right. I think that what we are doing right now, even though it's my second season, it feels like the first one. Mm. Because we made such a big turnover on players. I think we are the team with biggest turnover of players in the last year and a half since I'm here. And to be honest, most of them is not because we want it, but we are in this situation. What we can do, complain or just work hands on and try to build uh, the strong team that we want to build that's what i choose and totally agree usually my second season is always better than the first one actually i think my start in hammerby was a bit unusual because in Oldborg was not great in uh, sandefjord was not great in spain in my teams it was not great but some way i always managed to achieve the the targets of the club at the end um I feel right now we are more almost in a first season and of course we have some players and this perhaps was the the faith the hope we had when we made such a big change in the in the dressing room that perhaps the base was okay Oliver Fenger Kurtulus Loret Sadiku Nahir Besara these guys that play in a central part of the of the pitch and that are experienced and good level in all Svenskan that they could manage to help us to make work the others in a in a faster, easy way. But unfortunately, small injuries, Fenger, Loret, in and out, and he had these issues and uh, he couldn't find his best uh, version. And yeah, uh, sometimes it goes a little bit like this, that mm, things are not working w in your way. Was it unlucky? Uh, no, I don't like to use this word because then it comes your friends and then they come with uh, that I say something like, how you say in Swedish? Utur. Precis. Vi tänkte vi skulle köra en liten paus här för det är lite med Martis mick här. Så vi måste försöka...
Bra, då kör vi tillbaka. Då är vi tillbaka här från med Marty. Hur känns det? Känns det bra? Bra. Jag ja. pratar så mycket, ursäkta. <laughs> Långa utläggningar. Det är bra. Men det är, jag, min fråga, jag vet inte om jag fick något svar på den, men det var väl att är det någon spelare du känner att du saknar? Alltså någon spelare typ eh, i Silly som du skulle vilja få in? Nu har du fått in en... en position kanske. Position. Jag tror att the way you usually think and we agree with the club that we like to have a not a big squad because we have a fantastic thing going on without FF mm. so we don't want to have a long squad where those guys cannot mm. take part in the first team uh, i usually speak about two players per position so two left full backs two central backs and so on um the idea is the idea was to have that way and then i think that with mark now we get two pure left fullbacks, which, uh, which is Mark and Anton, Anton Kralj. Mm -hmm. Then on the right we have Marcus Carlson and Simon Strand that we know that he can play both right and left. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why mm -hmm. we signed him as well. Um, and then it's true that perhaps we are looking something at, uh, at the top in the forward position because we have been using some different players, but the only pure nine we have is Yusef Eravi that is doing so, so well. So, but we want to perhaps bring something there only if can help the team. It's not just to bring players for bringing players. We have another player in Otavev like Dennis Gould that mm -hmm. is doing so well. Mm -hmm. So we need to think as well in the long term. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, I feel that, that uh, we are covering in the positions and that we have quality in the squad, but it's, it's more about <laughs> getting these, these guys the time that they need to become the, the players that we think they can be. You mentioned Kralj. Have we extended the contract with him? I think this is more on Jelmerk uh, table, but uh, we were quite positive about his impact in the games he played. Mm. Um, Anton, as you know, I know him from Sandefjö. Um, he was a very good player for us. I think he was uh, the best uh, young player in, in, in Norwegian second division when we went up. And uh, Something happened in the Air Force because he started to struggle a bit with injuries. Um, it was kind of a solution for us in terms of the quality and the situation in the market. He was a free player. Uh, he had not a, a big salary, so to say. So in some way, it was a smart signing for us because he, he's still 25. Um, we think that if he can avoid injuries, he can be a very good player for us. And I think the games, not only, I know that people talk a lot about his 90 minutes against Sirius, where I think he showed that he's a good fullback in all his for a certain way of playing, yes. for sure. Um, but as well, he played 45 minutes second half against Malmo, and I think he did well. Uh, all the minutes he has played, he has quality. We can see that on, that on the training. What we need to make sure is that he has the continuity to deliver every weekend. Ja, det var inte egentligen att du skulle, eller om hans kvaliteter. För det, jag håller med dig att det, det ser man finns där. Det var mer att hans kontrakt har väl egentligen gått ut. Men du räknade med honom nu i truppen. Det var därför jag tänkte om det var... But on the As I said, this is more on Gelberg, and, yeah. and I think that uh, there okay, is a possibility yeah, yeah. to extend, yeah. uh, and I think uh, the club is working on it. Yeah. 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 Du, en grej som jag... Oh, förlåt. Nej, jag, kör, kör, kör. Eh, jag tänkte bara... Säsongen har ju inte gått som, som, som vi har planerat. Det är ju inte riktigt vad vi hade förväntat oss av, eh, även fast det har varit liksom mycket så här. Men vad är du nöjd med då i, i år? Om jag vänder så. Slipper vi prata om det negativa? Ja, ja, det är sant. No, mostly I'm very proud about the, about the work that the guys are doing behind the scenes. I think mm. that I, I mentioned that before. Um, I don't like to compare and I, I will not judge what happened before I arrive. Mm. But I know, I know the process. I know uh, the way the guys are working daily. Um, the standards in terms of to deliver every day when they come to Orsta, uh, how to become a better footballer by taking care of yourself, but all the details that comes from coming in the morning to leave in the afternoon, what does it mean to be a professional player? Not only in the one and a half hours that that is the training, but as well in the other things. I think the guys are working really well on that. And that makes me believe that this is the foundation to become better. So this is something that I feel proud, not only from the player side, but as well from the staff. I think the staff is doing a very great, uh, good job. The medical, the the coaches, the analysts, everybody is doing a good job. So th this is the part that I that I feel more satisfied. Mm. Om du fick gå tillbaka till början på säsongen, vad skulle du göra annorlunda? Vad hade du hade du gjort någonting annorlunda? Eller hade det varit på samma sätt nu? Vi har facit, så vi vet hur det har varit. Men 
Vilka ändringar hade du gjort jämfört med, dem, med det vi har sett hittills om du fick göra om den här säsongen nu? Um, we work we talk a lot about about what is required to make the last step to win titles. Mm. And I think that in terms of quality in the squad we definitely had last season the quality in the squad to try to to win a title. Uh, I think we were very close. Fortunately we lost on the penalties in the in the cup, mm. but uh, perhaps we miss the last edge in terms of of uh, the mental side of coping with the pressure about we were chasing Hecken. It was some games like um, it's very unusual that you go to play away against Hecken, having five central backs in the in the squad or six players and only one, and we ended in the most important or one of the key games of the season against Hecken away, and we ended playing Ajay and Loret that they never played together. It's nothing about their qualities because they are obviously good players, but that it's very unusual mm. that you don't have. Kurtulus was doing so well, he was not available. Feng was doing so well, was not available. Shaquille was not available. Um, against Sirius, we play a game at home that usually, I think, that should end 3-4-5-0. And it's one of those days that you finish 1-1. I'm not saying unlucky, huh? mm. no, so I, no, I never say no. unlucky. Uh, against uh, Varnamo at home, that people say that uh, Marti is so bad against Varnamo, he always lose. And okay, <laughs> If we check the three games that we play against Varnamo, Our uh, goal chances, expected goals, the three, eh? last two seasons plus this one. I think it's like 45 against 15. Mm. And they still had the capacity to win those games. So bravo for them. This is efficiency, this is quality. Uh, that doesn't mean that this will long over time. Uh, the game we play against Varnamo, I think we created, I don't know, I don't like these ex gay expected goals to explain football is not this, but we shoot, I don't know, 25 times we create crazy goal chances. The keeper makes the performance of the season. Mm -hmm. And then in two counters, that is our bat mm -hmm. to allow them mm -hmm. those counters, mm -hmm. then we lose the game. I think that mentally this had a price that we, we didn't cope well enough with this because I had the feeling that after Sirius at home, this draw, I knew that the Hellsborg game could be very difficult. Mm. Uh, I miss perhaps this will be more capacity to stay calm in those situations where you are really at the top to win a title, that you can still cope with more calm and say, they didn't, but the next one. Mm. It felt like almost uh, it doesn't go our way. Then we, okay. not giving up, but you know, we miss a little bit. And, and this is a big uh, a skill. So for instance, uh, comparing to this season, which I don't like it, but We come from two good performances against Sirius and against Kalmar, two wins in a row, and then unfortunately against BP, you can discuss about the penalties, you can discuss about the two goal clear chances that we have, but the fact is that we didn't play a good game. Why? Because the top, top, top teams are the ones who can perform week after week after week, and that can win when they don't play well. That you're gonna take one nil victory in the last minute or in a faster, and then you take three points and you say undeserved. Yeah, yeah, undeserved, but three points in the pocket. Mm -hmm. And perhaps we miss a little bit of of this. Mm -hmm. But going into this season, you, you, all the preparations, you still think you did the right choices. Is there anything you no. would change now? No. Or is it like <laughs> we, ha we because we okay? And the second question is with all these quite difficult away games that we started the season with, is that we that also. Did that kind of kill the season for us because we, there were too many difficult games? First of all, uh, there are a lot of coaches that are much better than me, so I don't pretend to be always right. Um, of course, many times after the game, I say, mm, we should have pressed that way, or we should have played with this guy, or we should have made the substitution here. Of course, as I'm human. I am not pretend to be right. I'm not here to be right. I came to Sweden just to improve as a coach and, and, and to challenge myself to see if I can help this club to be better. Of course, I regret sometimes. Uh, regarding the next question, um, The next question was? Well, I mean, having these away games that yes, you have. Yes, the away games, sorry. So the, the way 100%. that... hundred percent. I think that it was like, it's not an excuse. You need to play against all the teams yeah, at the end of the season. Yes. But it was almost like a little bit like almost the perfect storm <laughs> in the sense that I think it was very important to win the first game at home mm. against the Air Force mm. because we were coming from a cap that started very well And people thought that after cleaning 8-0 Sundsvall, this yes. will be 
Precis, now we're gonna kill it. I put everything I had in how to be a and SM gold. Precis, and then after two weeks I become a shit coach <laughs> because <laughs> we lost against Miolbi in a difficult game. Miolbi, Botta. Not easy, sorry to say, but no one is going there and winning 4-0 okay. in an easy game. No one in the league. Not Tamarby, not Malmo, no one. Uh, second, uh, March. I don't care what people say. The pitch was not the perfect pitch to play a football game. That we need to adapt, for sure. So not an excuse, but it's a fact. So anyway, we didn't play a good game. We lost in the semifinals. And then it was important to win against Air Force. But then the next game against Hecken away, we know, important game, difficult game. And I think we start so well. The first 10 minutes works, I think, really well. And suddenly we have this situation that kind of, it's a, it's, it's a shit goal. It yes. happens once yes. in a million. Yes. But then, okay, two, three mistakes that I always say, when individual mistakes are happening, I look at myself at the mirror. I'm not the coach who goes out and says, no, individual mistakes, you know what, on the player's fault. I always say that when a team makes a lot of individual mistakes is perhaps the structure is not good enough to protect the individuals so they are allowed to make mistakes but obviously for instance oliver that for me is one of the best keepers in the league uh, this will happen once in his career probably and it happened that day mm -hmm. and then we play malmo away look at now malmo they don't look that strong as it was or at least they are not in that momentum but we took them in the best peak of momentum so it's a lot of small things that doesn't take the, out the responsibility that we should have been better, 100%. But perhaps if instead of these four or five games away, difficult games in the first part of the season with a young team, we have a easier schedule, perhaps you start to get more confidence, you start to get some, some wins, and then it's not that now we're gonna be, we will be in first position, of course not, but perhaps it will be easier mentally for our guys, because when we start to lose a couple of games, three games, Marti, off, go, pa, 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 uh, anti tiki uh, these these people uh, pushing in the half time, I think it was against Miolbi, that we do a shit first half. And then I always been saying, Hammarby supporters are amazing, because when we need them the most, they support. That day, for the guys in the dressing room, after the half time, all these people pushing, it was not easy. It was not easy, but we need to accept it. And I want to think that all those things that happen to us will make us stronger in the future. That's the way I think. Jag tänkte på, du var inne på det lite förut om det här med fasta situationer till exempel. Det eh, var ju extremt bra förra året. Eh, har ni tränat mindre på det eller är det bara individuella, liksom att du har tappat en viss typ av... Vi tränar av... mer nu. No. Oh, sorry. We, 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 we are training even more ja. now. Ja. Um, Last season, just to kill some meats and some... Um, when we arrived, uh, we had Mohanad Jasse, mm. Nahir Besara was delivering so well, Jasse was delivering so well. But basically, uh, we had two, three players that were extremely good in FASTA. That were Bjorn Paulson, mm. perhaps the best player in aerial I duels am. that I ever coached. Ricard Magyar was extremely good. And actually, we were doing, it's fun, because I always say, if someone has been scouting me since my time in Norway and since my time in Oldbrook, we were delivering almost three, four same corner kicks as I've been doing in those countries. Mm. It's the same. And I was thinking, if someone knows me from Denmark or from Norway, they will, they will know what we're going to do. Mm. But it works so well, so why we need to change? Mm. Uh, then Bjorn left, then Ricker was injured. Uh, slowly we start, I think that Edwin is good, I think that Matt is good, but perhaps are not that dominant as these guys were. And uh, slowly, slowly the trend has not been positive. This season we are not happy at all. Mm. And the players know we change uh, since we came back from the summer break. We change completely. Mm. Obviously in every game we change, you know that we score this Gothenburg away goal with Steve Travalli. We score this goal um, last game of the season, Helsingborg away with Jewel. So we always try for variations. I think that Xavi is so good into that. But um, this season, for instance, since we came back from the break, I don't know if you noticed that we are not closing anymore with one player in the midline, but yeah. we are attacking with six players inside the box mm. just to make sure that, okay, we are not delivering very well. And Nahir and Shaquille, they know that we need to improve Monte. We need to deliver better, but at the same time, 
we felt that okay putting another guy inside the box we can create more chances mm -hmm. but we are not happy how the how the set pieces are working this season and and we work even more to try to improve how much is mental and how much is skill from players i don't think it's mental on the players right now i don't think that they feel like oh, we will not score if we have a a corner now we will not that, i don't think that's the the mindset um i remember when i was in spain uh, when when coaching in second division a lot of games are decided by really small details, so fast are really, really key. And we made a, a study with my staff back then, I'm talking about 10 years ago, and we're analyzing a lot of teams, a lot, in all European football. And at the end, we, we came into a summary uh, that it can sound a little bit simplistic, but the team at that moment who was scoring more goals in Europe by FASTA was Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. And we start to analyze the movements. Good deliver, Tony Cross or Luka Modric. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew that the ball was going to Sergio Ramos, but it worked. Yeah. And everybody was, but okay, good. Nothing, nothing special in terms of movements. So a little bit the summary is that sometimes you can build very good constellations, good movements, amazing puzzles there. But at the end, and this will be the same with the game, yeah. with the open game. When you have good players, they yes. make it work. Yes. Uh, en annan fråga som jag tänkte, alltså, vi har väl analyserat lite så här, att vi tycker att unga spelare har ju slagit igenom ganska bra i årets Hammarby. Uh, men vi tycker kanske de som vi hade förväntat oss skulle vara fanbärare, förstår vad jag menar då? Nej. Uh, star players ja, ja. Eh, ah, okay. skulle ha levererat lite eh, mm. bizarra äldre, ja. Ja, ja, ja. äldre runt omkring skulle kanske vara de som, som bär eh, Hammarby framåt, men det har ju känts som att det är de unga, det är Mackan Karlsson och det är Erabi och de andra. Hur kommer det sig? Är det, är det bara vi som känner så? Eller? Yeah, we can agree that the young players are doing so well, especially mm. in the last games. Mm. I think that perhaps Mackan is the one that has been amazing since the first day, has been so stable. Mm. Um, he had this mistake on the last game in the marking in the goal. But I think out of that, he has been outstanding in almost all the phases of the game. Uh, Yusuf, I think he had his process. Uh, I know that some of your mates here were asking for him to be 11 starting from already February when he scored some goals in the cup. I think that players sometimes they just need the right moment. Mm. Uh, because sometimes if you, as a coach, if I throw them too early, then it can just make lack of confidence if the performance is not good. So that will affect them in the future. Mm. I think that Yusuf has gain and has pushed and has mentally worked to get ready to take the chance as he's doing now mm. to start games from the beginning. Uh, it was a moment on the season that for him, for his development, was so good to play 30 minutes here, 25 minutes here, 45 minutes here. It was so good. Um, but uh, yeah, we can agree that the young guys, some of them, most of them are mm. doing so well. And perhaps the experienced players, they are so important. Eh? Uh, I think that the fact that when we look at the young guys, they are doing well. Well, it's because Loret, it's because Matt, it's because Davor. Sometimes we miss Davor. Mm -hmm. Davor is so important for this team. Mm -hmm. So, Nahir, that they help them a lot to perform. And perhaps we see that or we think that they are not doing that well. Well, again, a little bit behind the scenes. We always have big expectations mm -hmm. with players like Nahir Besara, like Loret Sadiku, like, but the work that they are doing as well to support the young players, mm -hmm. to make them, give them the confidence to perform. Uh, I think that in the long term we will see the benefit of it. Even though perhaps we have, I can understand that you might have the feeling that uh, oh, Nahir Besara is not performing that great. Well, we are now more or less half of the season and Nahir Besara is in similar figures that he was last season at this moment. Mm. Uh, he's, I think he scored already five goals. Nahir, if I'm not wrong, four or five. Mm. Last season he scored ten. Okay, he's on his way. <laughs> Even though the beginning of the season has been much more difficult. Mm because it's easier to perform individually when the collective is working well. Mm. Jag skulle vilja bara för att förtydliga, jag har aldrig sagt att du är en shit coach i alla fall. <laughs> Okej. <Okay>. Men, <laughs> men, jag, jag, men jag har mm, bob, bob. <laughs> men, men jag, jag absolut. Nu det skulle vara konstigt om jag satt där och, och inte var. Jag jag varit kritisk mot delar i spelet. Mm. Framförallt sista tredjedelen tycker jag är eh, vi är för statiska. Jag tycker att vi spelar med för lågt bolltempo. Jag skulle vilja se mer rörelser och framförallt skulle jag vilja se att vi kommer kanske lite mer eh, offensiva löpningar in i box som en andra våg. Målet till exempel som Fredrik Hammar gjorde mot var det Sirius, Sirius borta. Sirius. Exakt mer sånt i det som jag har saknat och det är det som jag har kritiserat att jag tycker att vi är för ensamma i boxen 
och att det går för långsamt. Jag tycker när vi överbelastar på en kant så tycker jag inte att vi har några direkt rotationer eller rörligheter. Och det är väl där jag kanske någonstans har känt så här att ju längre säsongen går och jag ser ingen direkt större skillnad. Nu såg vi ju Sirius mm. eh, målet här senast också. Vem var det när Simon Strand tog löpningen och var Djokovic som gjorde mål här nu i eh, Kalmar? Den löpningen Först, av ja. Simon Strand är helt magisk också. Han är mm. han som öppnar upp och, och drar isär. Så det kanske är på gång att komma. Eh, men när Micke Hjelmberg var här så sa jag även det också att det kanske är så att Marty är på en lite för hög nivå för... Eh, spelarna i allsvenskan. Ja. Bara så här att, den, alltså att spelarna kanske inte tar in den taktiska direktiven fullt ut och att det kan vara det. Vi svenskar, jag ska bara, jag ska klar. Vi svenskar, det mest typiska för en svensk, det är ju om en tränare... Fira, fira, framåt. Nej, nej, nej jag, jag tänkte mer om du är på ett, på ett arbete eller en tränare och så står tränaren och berättar och håller föredrag eller, och så säger har alla förstått? Alla kommer säga ja. Mm. Det första de gör när de går ut i rummet är att gå och fråga, förstod du någon? Så att då går de och pratar med varandra. Och jag tänker att det kanske är så att det är för mycket taktik som de inte kan processera. First of all, let me say, not at all too high level for the players. Never, never, please. It's the opposite. It's me that I need to learn from the players and I need to learn how to make them, how to make them perform. What it might be true is that some of the concepts, some of the, the way of training might be new for them might be new that's that's for sure one easy example i don't know we speak a lot about the third man concept third man is a is a concept that you go to netherlands you go to spain you go to italy and the 10 years old kids are training on this and perhaps in sweden nothing wrong on that but it's not it's not very common to use it so we need to work on that why we are oh i'm stubborn because i think it's a concept for instance that can help us a lot to perform and to win games um One question, were you happy against Sundsvall when we cleaned the main about the expression of the way we played? För att vara helt ärlig så kommer jag faktiskt inte riktigt ihåg hur, alltså hur matchen... Jag är lite mer sådär att jag går inte bara på resultat utan jag är lite mer hur jag... The expression, that's what I'm saying. The way we played that day, 8-0, mm. you think it was a fun game to watch? Ja, det tror jag att det var. Däremot så var jag nog den här. Du, du sa att du är alltid positiv. Ah. Jag är alltid pessimistisk, negativ. Ooh, så jag, sorry for you then. Ja, så det, det, det är därför jag har okay, haft, haft depressioner i flera år. Men, men det är därför du fokuserar på lösningar. Jag ser det som jag skulle vilja se. Jag kanske ser det som jag upplever som det här kan bli bättre. Det här måste man jobba på. Medan du kanske ser det. Det här är bra, grabbar. Nej, no, actually, everybody says that I'm very demanding and I'm always pushing. But I like people that say how we can make things better. I think that that's always the mindset. What I'm trying to say, and that's why I just make this joke, is that it's not that we wanted, okay, after Sundsvall, we play a fantastic, in my opinion, offensive football, and now, you know what, we're going to take it more static and, yeah, we don't, we will not attack that much. Nay, but football and, and the teams is not like PlayStation, that you can just, it's, it's a process, and Imagine that instead of playing this, I always speak about, just to simplify, this positional football. Positional football is not a static football at all. Positional football is the expression of the Dutch football from 70s. Mm. The total football is the football that nowadays in Premier League, City, Arsenal are trying to play or are playing. To define in a very broad way. Yeah? So in some way we are trying to use most of the principles and we play this kind of football. The problem is that As in any other style, if we were playing direct football, fira fira tuo, you can win games and, and make it so well. But when it doesn't work, the fira fira tuo and long balls, it looks not so good either. Good example, Ellsborg last season. Ellsborg. Ellsborg was, it has been a counter-attack team for the last four or five years since yes. Jimmy Tellin took over. Yes. Especially after the second season. The first one, they tried to play more possession. But then counter-attack. When last season they were at the bottom, everybody could say that shit football. Mm -hmm. So boring to watch this counter-attack football. But now that they are executing this counter-attack football at high level, it's fantastic to see them. I like them. Mm -hmm. I sit in the, in the and, I, and I enjoy how they play. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not the kind of football that I prefer. But every kind of football, every style executed at high level is fantastic to watch. Yeah, I agree. Executed at low level, <laughs> it, it, then is when you can start to think it should be better if we do this or that. And I think that that's a bit the dangerous way. It happens as well with the clubs, and I've been having this discussion as well with some boards. Many times when a club wants to play offensive football, it works, it works, and the day 
it doesn't work anymore because football is cycles and mm -hmm. it happens to all the clubs, then, oh no, now we need to play, I don't know, direct football. Yeah. So they bring a coach to be here. Yeah. And when it doesn't work, now we go back here. Yeah. <laughs> I think that the best clubs in the world are the ones who have a clear identity and they follow, they follow. Okay, now it doesn't work anymore with this group of players or with this coach. Mm. We bring a new coach with this philosophy. We the, 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 you keep the philosophy, but precise identity. Okay. Either if it's counter attack, it's fine. Yeah. If it's direct football, it's sure. fine. If it's whatever is the football you want to play, but go deep into this, believe into this, because that's what it will get you into the long way. Or your bar Hammarby, so take you now. Is our vision like this? Is a certain type of football. 100%. I understand that Hammarby wants to mm. play a very offensive football, mm. that wants to be a team that is fun to watch. Mm. And I understand that now, when things are not going and our expression is not top, I understand that some people say this is boring. But look at something that is funny as well. When I came to Hammarby, one of the biggest issues was that we concede a lot of goals. Mm. So uh, Stefan Bilborn, that in my opinion did a fantastic job in Hammarby, was always getting criticized because ah, we concede a lot of goals. Considering 50 goals per season, you can never win a title and blah, blah, blah. Then we achieved last season by, in my opinion, playing a very offensive football, to not concede so much. Why? Because we're a team that tries to control more the game, to not let the opponent to have this up and down game. In the up and down game, obviously you're going to have chances mm. to attack more these organized, in balance defenses. But in football, there is a rule. What goes fast comes back fast. Mm. <laughs> and you need to be ready then to have the right kind of players f to do this and accept that this is like a boxing game. I kick, you kick, I kick, you kick. Perhaps we play more, I don't know, a game where it's about finding the right moment to kick hard. But we want to kick hard 10 times and not only one. We want to kick hard. So this way of playing that, as I said, if, he, if it's even a good expression, can be so beautiful in my opinion, but this is just opinions. If it's not executed at this top level, Uh, yeah, I do agree that perhaps our expression has not been as good as we wanted. Jag citerar Nanne vad han sa. Vi vill ha tå, tå, vet du vem Nanne? Nanne Bergström. Ja. Han, han sa, mm. vi vill ha tålamod men vi vill se resultat nu. <laughs> <laughs> Okej, <Okay>. fair enough. <laughs> Nej, men fair det, enough. Det är så här, pressen på Hammarby är lite annorlunda än vad Älvsborg med all respekt till vad de gör nu. Så, här. så är det ju många som, som lever liksom, efter senaste matchen. Hur såg det ut? Och så. så det finns ju inte det här vad ska man säga, tålamodet speciellt bland våra supportrar. Mm. Men, du, har du, men du har gjort en liten förändring ändå i, i hur du spelar än vad vi gjorde tidigare i våras. Eller hur? Du har gjort lite förändringar. I, eller det kanske man gör hela tiden från match Look, till match. Look, I cannot say that I'm super happy with the way we're playing. We're not. And for instance, in my opinion, game against Beppe is a game that perhaps with some edges small edge we could have win. Mm. Jewel has this double chance. Uh, we hit two posts. Mm. How many Beppe uh, had? Not many. So in some way it was an even game. I don't want to discuss about the two penalties. I don't care. What I'm trying to say is that despite all this, mm. and if you want the result, my analysis goes far beyond this. Mm. This is not the level of performance that I expect. Another myth. I never said that we lack motivation. Never. I said that the level of activation, mental activation, that is different than motivation. My players and all the staff and everybody who plays in Hammarby, we have huge motivation, mm. huge. Mm. But to achieve the level of activation required to perform against an opponent that is preparing as well, week after week after week, this is an art. Mm. And in this day, we didn't achieve that. This is different than motivation. But said that, the level of activation, uh, sorry, the level of performances that we have, It was not, uh, it's not at the level we want. But I'm completely convinced that it should get better through the season. Mm. Why? Because I believe in the players. Why? Because I do believe that young players get better over time. Why? Because I do think that more time we train together, more time we play together, then we for sure we're gonna develop. And then one day we're gonna have a fantastic game where we're gonna create a lot of chances. And one day the opponent will be better than us. We're going to lose the game, we're going to shake hands and accept that this is football mm. because that's where we are. But I'm completely convinced that I see the direction forward mm. and that these guys uh, can give us a lot of a lot of wins. Men när jag, när jag tittar, I'm not a coach and I'm, that's probably good for him. Okej. Okay. <laughs> när jag har mycket åsikter så uh, uh, and that's why I'm here. Anyway, när jag tittar nu på Hammarby så känns det som att vi har det back four 
och målvakten har mer boll mm. än mittfältare och anfallare. För mig som gillar Hammarby så känns det väldigt konstigt att det är på det sättet. Vad, 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 hur, hur ändrar man på det? Hur får vi mittfälten att få mer boll? Hur får vi anfallarna att få bollen oftare? Vad, vad, vad måste vi göra? I think that there was uh, one coach that described it so well. Everything that we do is like climbing a, a mountain, an Everest. Base one, the target is yes. uh, is, is to reach the the top. So we want to have the ball much more close to the top than not in the base one. In base one, it's very difficult to climb there. But sometimes we need to do step by step. Uh, right now, what we're experiencing is that because of many reasons, that perhaps I don't need to go deep here, we are not getting into the moment where we find the surfaces, the zones where the players that we want. It doesn't make sense for us that the ball is more on Simon Strand or Macan or on whoever, than not on Nahir Besara, than not on August Mikkelsen. These are the players that we want them to have the ball. And now it's a work that the staff, the coaching and staff, through training, through everything, we are doing to try to make sure that we arrive more into the last... Uh, said that, uh, it's good that that uh, in football everybody has an opinion. And it's <laughs> and, uh, and that's the way it must be. Uh, but for instance, my, my sister, she's an architect. And I never discuss with her if, uh, you know, look, this pillar, it should be stronger, it should be wider. No one discuss those things. <laughs> but in football, it's so nice because everybody has an opinion, <laughs> yes. even though we are not very, very educated. What, what I'm saying now, uh, we know, we think that we are quite clear on what are the things that we need to get better at, 100%. And we work in consequence to try to get better. But when you say we, 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 Staff, the club and... Yeah, the players the, and the, okay. Gellenberg is aligned on what are the things that we need to improve. Okay. I think that the club knows in the process where we are. And you ask me, this is the sp- expression that I, I would like to have right now today as a football club. No. If you ask me, what is an expression that you would like to see? I think we played a fantastic game last season against Gothenburg at home. Mm. I think we smashed mm. them. Oh. Mm. We smashed them. Mm. We were all the time high. Mm. We were recovering the ball so high. We were creating chance after chance. And it was only 3-0, but my feeling yes. was that no chance for the opponent. This is for me the at least the level that I would like to arrive, if not even more. Mm. Mm, I don't I don't I don't know if there are a lot of games in all advanced can where the winning team is that dominant as we were in some of those games. The target is to get there. Oh, I go at home to the, this year. Uh, against us. But Aiko... När vi hem- spelade Aiko borta nu? Ja. De var lika dominanta? No, but that's a... No? Yeah, I don't think they were that dominant. I think we were we were not very good in that game. But no. I don't think they were that dominant creating chance after okay. chance. Okay. I think we were, we didn't create enough... We didn't create at all in this game away. But I didn't have the feeling that they were so dominant against us. Okay. They scored two goals in two big mistakes we had on the build-up. Jag skulle vilja... Du, du säger att filosofin är någonting man håller fast vid och, och här, jag kan ha helt fel här men det är min upplevelse och som jag var inne på lite tidigare men just att det känns ju som att vi har fallit med, vi är lite mer avvaktande i, i def off eller off def mm. och jag tycker att vi spelar lite mer shape lite lägre, har vi ändrat liksom press triggers mot tiden för det känns som att förra året försvarade vi mer framåt, jazz gick mycket mer liksom in i press stötte uppåt och styr väldigt väldigt mycket brett ut mot kanterna. Nu känns det nästan som att vi we are using different ways of pressing according mm. to the skills of the players we have. That's why I don't like to compare all the time with ah last season we were doing like this. It's a new team. Um, Men det är medvetet att vi ligger lite lägre. Ja, ja, vi är, vi är. And perhaps it's not the optimal thing, but just for instance, just one example. Jose Verabi is a player that can really cope with high pressure. But perhaps there are other players around him that are not that extremely good on this. So sometimes Yusef, if he does the right trigger, he needs the other players around. Yes. Otherwise, he will get alone. Mm. And then he will, we will lose all his energy. So we need to be aligned. And that's why I say that one thing is the philosophy. We need to get there. Another thing is how we can slowly get there by getting the best of the players we have right now and teaching them and learning them how to get into where we want to, to be. Last season, we had two players like Gura and Berisha that they had numbers in terms of stats, in terms of physical deliver for the pressure that we are talking about Premier League level. Mm. Extremely top players physically for the pressure and so on. 
this season we have, for instance, Viktor Djokanovic, that is playing in a similar position that Gura. Viktor has other skills than Gura. Mm. In some parts of the game, today he's better than Gura. Mm. In some other parts of the game, he's, he's, he's mm. not that good or different. So then my job is to adjust. Victor can press high, yes. He has the same impact that Gura had last season, not yet, but we need to get there. Right now what we're trying to do is to balance in a way that this is efficient and this is effective against opponents. That's basically what we try to do. En sista sen, jag, det känns som att jag bara pratar, men det här, ja, men det det här, är, min, det här är min att få sitta ner här. Jag tror att vi kommer bli vänner efter det här också. Det är, <laughs> men, nej, men, som Janis var inne lite på här nu, att, att vi bygger mycket eh, från målvakt och i backlinje. Mm. Jag förstår varför vi gör det, framförallt förra säsongen. I år tycker jag, för det känns som att våra motståndare har läst det, de går ju inte upp i press. Och det är väl det jag tror vi på läktaren kan känna är väldigt frustrerande. Det känns som att vi försöker hålla i bollen för att locka upp dem. Men de går väldigt, väldigt sällan upp i press. Mm. Och det är då vi på läktaren står och upplever att det händer ingenting. Och liksom, ja. det, det, kan vara, det kan upplevas frustrerande, men jag förstår ju att det finns en, en tanke bakom det. Jag. And, and I totally understand, for instance, the first half uh, Botta mot Ellsborg. Dålig. Så so vi har the ball a lot in our own box. Yeah. Losing the ball, we don't find the right guy, what we call the free man. We don't activate the right tempo to. Why we do this? Because we invite them to press, beat them and run and accelerate the game. Mm. And this season, so many times, it happens that today in the practice we had to stop because we did a fantastic action with high risk to build up. We find the right player and then when we need to what we call match tempo, accelerate tempo of mm. we slow down. Guys, this is not the purpose. This is like when Neymar dribbles one guy mm. and then he stops because he wants to dribble again. No, mm. dribble and score. Mm. So this is a bit what it takes some time, sometimes, because the players are not perfect, because I'm not perfect into explaining them what is the purpose. It takes some time, but I think we're going to get there because the foundation is starting to settle. Did I answer to you? Yeah. yeah. En annan snackis har ju varit Mikkelsen till exempel som har ofta spelat och, och Nalic är ju eh, Nalic vad jag vet spelat mycket på höger och eh, Mikkelsen har varit mer central och sen han, men vi ser inte Hammarby använda dem som i de, de positionerna vad, vad beror det på? Är det... I think it was very clear when we spoke with, with Nalic and actually as far as I know I think that he could have been uh, staying in, in Malmö but uh, perhaps they saw him more as a as a winger and he feels that he's more like a central player. Uh, we do agree with this. I think that his best position, Adi, is a number 10. Um, he's a player that has quality to play in between lines, that he's a player that can get into the box and score goals. He's a player that actually physically he can hold the ball, that can, has some definitely some strength on the high pressing. Mm, that he's smart enough and has the quality enough to play in other positions, yes. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we have been using him m mostly as a number nine. Mm. In a moment that perhaps Yusef was not ready yet to start, in a moment where when we look at the squad perhaps we couldn't find many other players who could fill that role as a number nine. And then this number nine, Adi Nalic, is Nalic with his skills. It's not that I pretend Nalic to be to be, I don't know, Ronaldo, whoever, is knowledge as a nine. So we need to get the best of him. I will make a mistake as a coach if when we play knowledge as a number nine, we ask him the same that if we play Yusef. Mm -hmm. I always say the same to the guys. They need to play according to their skills. Uh, my job is to, the puzzle, make it work. Um, obviously, we would lo love in a, in a perfect scenario to have these skills in this position, these skills in these positions. But sometimes it's not possible and you need to adapt. I need to adapt. So uh, knowledge for me mostly is a number 10, mm. as it is August Mikkelsen. But then in some way when in a situation where one of the best players from last season, that is Nahir Besara, that is our captain, his best position as well is a number 10. Mm. We spoke about the possibility to drop Nahir as a number 8, mm. but in some way I felt that that doing that we could lose. Of course he's good on the ball. He could have helped us in the build-up game. But his best skill for me, Nahir, many times I joke a little bit with him, like sometimes he plays 90 minutes, undeserved minutes, because he's not so much in the game, but he has the quality then to score a goal mm. or to make an assist. That's his best skill. Mm. He gets into, he makes points 
uh, Nahir Besara. So now we are ending in a situation where perhaps August Mikkelsen in Trumso, they play 3-5-2. Mm. And actually, August Mikkelsen was the second striker with a lot of freedom, moving around and so on. When we spoke about bringing August uh, in the beginning, uh, we spoke about the possibility to get wingers that go so deep um, and then play August more central. Mm. But at the end, we get August. We didn't sign more wingers. So at the end, now August, we think that if he can do the role of this left winger coming inside, mm. so he ends playing in central zones, but standing a little bit on the left, so he can come inside, make this diagonal pass, make these shoots, uh, less defensive responsibility if you want as well. We think it's a, it's a, it's a lot of teams in the world that play with the number ten a little bit in the left, thousand of players that are number ten and play a little bit coming from the left. But um, as I said, it's a bit adjusting, get the best of the squad I have and trying to find the right connections because perhaps August fits so well with with uh, Tess in the left uh, or perhaps, uh, I don't know, Nahir fits so well with Makan on the right. Uh, this is something that we need to evaluate day after day. How good is August Mikkelsen? Yeah, how, how good can he be? So good. Okay. Uh, actually, when we bring him, I remember some of the players came in uh, after a couple of trainings. Hey, wow, what a player! Mm -hmm. Because in the trainings he was he was killing it. I think he was very unfortunate to get this injury just in mm -hmm. the first game at home after 15 minutes. He lost almost all the precision. Then I took uh, perhaps a brave, too brave decision. When I look back, I regret to let him start the game against Oiko because it was a derby. Mm. In some way, he was one of the big signings. Mm. I think he's a guy with personality that really wants to show his quality in Sweden. And it didn't work well. It was a very tough game. The game we were not connected. And then I think that mentally as well for him was like, phew, first game, injured. Then the first game he jumps in as 11 starting. is not a great performance collectively, individually. So all those things, he's 22. Mm. So a little bit on his head, then he got this setback as well that slowed down his tempo, mm. and now he's on his way back. Hopefully he can he can be ready this Thursday. Mm. Oh, okay. Precis som du sa det, precis innan han blev skadad nu andra gången så reagerade jag just på att han, han var både på vänsterkanten och högerkanten, men han gick väldigt, väldigt, väldigt långt in centralt från kanterna och var väldigt mycket med och överbelastade och såg jätteint. Alltså det, det var det bästa jag hade sett utav honom tycker jag i rörelsemönster och hamma med. Där måste jag tycka jag i försvarsspel att han hamnar väldigt väldigt långt ner på vänsterkanten och lämnat väldigt stor yta. But it depends as well who is the fullback because if we have a fullback that is very deep and can allow him to go inside all the time, but if the fullback is so far because he's not that offensive or he's not that deep attacking, then he needs to naturally it's not because we say him ah you need to stay on the width all the time then naturally he doesn't have the teammate let's say to find these spaces so um, yeah it's a little bit of a process mm. but that's why i say that football is about relations and what it looks on paper ah this is a great idea then good on paper shit on grass <laughs> <laughs> and we need to try and go try and go it's gonna be the headline Ska vi gå mot Europa eller vad? Ja, jag tänkte bara jag tänkte ja. bara dra den här lansen öppna träningar. Ja, 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 okej, okej. <laughs> den har du säkert hört. Eh, men är det du som känner att du vill ha stängt eh, på, på träningarna eller är det liksom allihopa som, som vill ha det? Nu har ni bara en eh, öppen träning som I think it was a a discussion actually that we mm. uh, start with the club when actually when I signed mm. I knew that Milos already I'm not sure if it's Stefan but it was already mm. with some close trainings uh, the club came as well from the the pandemic the corona mm. years and ah. so the thing about I think in my opinion there is no connection in between close practices and how open you are as a club mm. I think that the openness that we show as a club should be through all the staff, all the players getting into the community, going to events, being welcoming when it's open practices. The reason why we have close practice is very simple. Hammarby attracts such a big interest. Mm. When we have open practices, sometimes it's not perfect focus for, for players because there is play, there is people who perhaps, uh, I don't know, uh, Nahir, uh, autograph, uh, after the practice, ah, you're sure. Right. And it's totally natural because that's the way it must be with the fans. We mm -hmm. cannot ask open practice, but you need to be quiet or no, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Fans should be fans. Uh, but then we agreed, okay, some days a week, 
we should have the calmness, for instance, set pieces. Mm. That is a lot about focus, a lot about detail, so on. Is it smart to do it in open practice? Mm. When we look at the best clubs, how they are doing it, perhaps it's not the path that we want. But then we need to find a good balance because mm. Bayern is a is an open club, mm. and we need to be good on this. Mm. And that's why I always say, uh, I never said, you asked me today, uh, last week to come, and I say, yes, first time. Ah. You, <laughs> you didn't invite me before, because I will come yeah, before. Yeah. <laughs> Every time, me, my staff, the players, mm. someone asks for, we are there. 100%. Mm. I think that's the way to. Uh, if we could open more practices, that's a good discussion. Mm. And then it's all, as well about logistically, mm. what does it mean to open practice in Orsta? What does it mean when we go to Cetra, when we go to Teletour? In Teletour, it's impossible to make open practice. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it'll be like this. I understand that it's not popular, perhaps, this decision. But as I said, I think that the target is not to be popular as a coach. Mm. My target is to make sure that we win games. Mm. And if we think, together with the club, that we gain a small edge by uh, this uh, close practice. Again, it's not about me, it's about the players, to give them the best conditions mm. to deliver. That's why we do it. But not because we want the fans away, come on, you know that mm. <laughs> we want them you all the time. It's a little strong up in the year. It will be tight. It's hard to like distance yourself from supporters and so on. So you have to stay very close. Precis. I think we need to find a good balance and it's something that, that we have been discussing about how we could get better at this. Mm. To find a good balance between how much the fans, the supporters want to come, how much we can involve them. But again, I'm, I need to say as well, I'm very critical about how much the players or the staff could do mm. to make sure that we create this togetherness as a club. I think that we can do much more yeah. out of ours. Uh, Men det här måste vara en stor skillnad mot Norge och Danmark och de klubbar var innan, eller hur? Alltså trycket i Hammarby måste vara mycket, mycket större än, än de andra Precis. klubbarna. Precis, I mean, in Sandefjord, even if we had uh, open practice, perhaps it will come <laughs> 20. <Yes. laughs> no, it is different. Hammarby is a big club, guys, and you need to understand that the interest is massive. When we go and have a practice, I don't know, uh, last season before Helsingborg game, mm. uh, but uh, we had a practice the day before the game, and it was a lot of people in the training. Mm. And that shows how big is this club. Is that optimal for the players? Mm, good discussion. Mm. I'm not saying that is bad, but good discussion before an important game. Is that the best focus or that the best way to get into all full focus in the practice? Mm. It depends. Some mm. guys perhaps is good because they get motivated because there's people watching the practice and some others might feel <laughs> okay. a bit yes. different. Okay. Inna, innan ni går vidare till Europa så har jag bara en, och det här är en fråga som vi, jag vet att många supporter är intresserade <laughs> Och det är ing, liksom självklart inte säga något, något speciellt i, i, i allsvenska, men om Martin Cifuentes fick välja en valfri nummer nio, nummer nio är något som det är något som vi supporter pratar om här. Vi, ser, vi har sett det som problematiskt i, i spelet och vi har prövat flera olika spelare. Så om, om du, okay, du får inte ta Messi eller Ronaldo, men om du fick, vilken skulle du säga är en typisk Martin Cifuentes nia? Om du fick bygga din drömtaktik och liksom... Okej, okay, because one thing is typisk, and in the clubs I've been, I had the strikers I had and I had to adapt. And one thing, another thing is who I would love to have as a nine. Um, Som du ser skulle passa in i din fotbollsfilosofi. Yeah, I think for me the number nine is very important, that has three, four qualities. The first one is that should be a good player inside the box, should be good into finishing skills, because I think that usually my teams are good into creating chances, so that the number nine has these skills is important. The second skill is that should be a player, if possible, that would be good into the linking game, lay off, playing a little bit on back on the goal, being good into the passing game if you want, especially to activate second lines. And a third one, a player that could be good on the pressing game because it's very difficult to, to be a pressing, high-pressing team if you don't have a striker that starts this process. So, um, why we have been playing with a lot of number nines? Um, basically, because we had a lot of rotation in the squad. Uh, I think that when I arrived, Astrid, Astrid is a good striker. He's a very good striker, Astrid Salmani. But in my opinion, uh, he's a better striker for a counter-attack team mm. than for a positional team. Why? Because his best skills is in open pitch. Mm -hmm. When he can run, when he can... And then he's good on uh, pressing. He's very good. And actually with us, a lot of people criticize Astrid. And in six months I was with him. He scored, if I'm not wrong, few goals, but he made like five or six yeah. uh, Riba uh, yeah. post. Yes. He was so unlucky. 
So otherwise, we had a striker that in six months, in, I don't know, 12, 14 games in all I don't know. I know that we cannot count in that way. But easily he, he could have a score of four, yes. five, six goals. So he's a good average. I think that is an illusion to expect that in Ole Svenskan, every striker that plays in Bayern will score one goal per game. Mm. It is an illusion. Uh, then we got, uh, it's true that in some games I use Villiot because I thought that having, for instance, Gura and Michael Lado, extremely fast, extremely deep wingers, to play with a number nine as Villiot that can drop, then either the central back follows, so then the full backs has one with one, and this very good, or if the central back doesn't follow, then you have a super in the middle. Mm. So in some games, we thought it was interesting. Berisha, as I said, for me, he was a very good signing for Hammarby. Not only financially, as it showed later that we got a lot of money for him, but in terms of performance, I think that sometimes I read people that I think it's unfair. I think that Vetton performed at very good level with us, and we got a lot of points with him on the pitch. But uh, if I'm not wrong, he played 14 games. Two of them in the beginning coming from the bench, and he couldn't play the last two because, or the last one, because he had an injury on the last month, month and a half. He was playing with a lot of pain. Uh, he scored four goals, and he had clear chances to score, clear to score at least three, four more. In 12 games to score five, six, seven goals, this is top in all Svenskan guys. Uh, I don't know what is the expectation of people. You know, we're gonna get a striker that will score in 30, 30 goals, 30 games. No one has done it in the last, I don't know, 10 ha, years. Had you any conflict? Had you and Vetton Berisha? Was there any conflict? No, no, Vetton is my guy. And he played his cards to go uh, he okay. wanted to go. Yeah, That's okay. All. okay. Fair enough. And no problem. I wish him yeah. the best. But han han lämnar inte Hammarby för att du inte så du, din taktik inte nah. passade honom eller någonting sånt. Media plays always an important role in all this, mm. and that's how it is. But sometimes things is like this season. Marty had a lot of conflicts with the players and so on. Yeah, yeah. But last season when we were winning, Marty had no conflicts. Mm. And perhaps it was it was the opposite that I push more yes. when we were winning than now okay. that I'm trying to give them more love. Media always plays a game, and it's a lot of things that I cannot, I cannot spend my time on what media is saying or on what the supporters are. Th- As I said, I'm here to be the best coach I can be for Hammarby, mm. not to just look amazing or just be populist and Marti is the best. No. <laughs> okay. Can we share? Europa come here. Europa. Ah, precis. Do you go tomorrow, ma? Punza. På onsdag. På onsdag. Okay. Ja, ja onsdag men morgonen. vi ses där. <laughs> Okej, okay, vi ses där. Absolut. <laughs> ja, eh, men vad känner du inför den matchen då? Är det... um, 20 är stark, ja. 20 är en stark strong, strong, strong team. Mm. They finish fourth in the Eredivisie. It's a strong league. Uh, it's a historical club. They had the struggling year some years ago, but now yeah. they are back mm. and they are doing well. We have been analyzing them quite a lot with the challenge that they are in precision. Mm. They play only two friendly games and one internal friendly game. Mm, mm. Um, they changed the coach and they sold perhaps his the best player last season. So it's some changes. But what we have seen so far is that they keep the constellation, they keep the way of playing from last season. They are an aggressive team when they attack, they make a lot of runs, they play high, high tempo football in terms of up and down, mm. go deep. They like to go on counter as well. Uh, but we face the round knowing that Perhaps was one of the worst opponents we could get. Mm. Uh, strong together with Club Bruges, mm. uh, perhaps the two mm. strongest mm. in the round. But we face uh, the round with uh, with a lot of uh, I don't know um, expectations, a lot of energy, ambition. We know that it's going to be difficult. Of course, it will be difficult. But why not? Why we cannot uh, have a good game? Especially, I think that the key will be to get a good result in Netherlands, mm. because I'm sure that we get a good result in Netherlands that allow us to to decide things in Teletu, then in Nia Soder Stadium, mm. then it will be tough for them K- as well. Kanske en dum fråga, men är det skillnad på förberedelserna när du ska spela mot Twente jämfört med Malmö borta eller åka till Göteborg? Det är liksom en resa, en resa. Förbereder ni på ett annat sätt nu för att internationellt? I think it's always more. Uh, it, the guys, all the staff, all the organization is pumped by the fact that we're going to play okay. an international game. So, hey, big games in Osvenskan are super nice. I've been coaching in Denmark, I've been coaching in Norway, in Spain, and I always say the atmosphere that you guys in Sweden have in the top games is, is unbelievable, it's so good. But we know that, uh, for instance, in, in Twente Stadium, 
is a strong atmosphere mm. for Dutch standards. Mm. So when it comes to the top four, top five clubs in Netherlands, they are there. Mm. They are there in terms of the atmosphere. Mm. And for us as, as staff, as players, obviously it's a international game. Mm. It's it's those games that you want to, in all the games you want to look good, but especially on this one you want to look, because we represent Hammarby, we represent Sweden. Mm. So we, we are proud of having this chance and we are so pumped uh, that we need to be more careful of having a different approach. I think the only difference is that it's 180 minutes game. Mm -hmm. mm. 180 mm. minutes. We cannot lose the round after 30 minutes. Mm. We cannot. We need to play in a smart way, mm. according to our philosophy. We need to play uh, ambitious, but knowing that the game will not be decided in the first half mm. or in the first 60 minutes. It's a 180 minutes game, and we need to play with the, those cards. It, men uh, blir det mer blir det mer till fotbollen eller förändrar du eller gör gör du någon ändring i i startelvan liksom att du är mer defensiv på borta plan kanske vi inte ska prata om det om de tittar på det här just det de har inga öppna träningar här inte de förstår inte svenska heller no what we what I think we're gonna try to surprise a bit in the way in some tactics in some details on how we approach the game Today we had a very good practice with the guys and uh, we the staff were very positive about about what we saw in the pitch. Mm -hmm. And as I said, definitely I think that uh, there is a emotional part that we need to consider. From one side is the big challenge. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's a big scenario for a lot of players who never play mm -hmm. a game like this. But on the other hand, it's an opportunity. Uh, young players, uh, they want to, they want to represent Hammarby. They want to play well for Hammarby, but as well, mm. one day mm. I'm sure that Marcus Carlson would love to play in Premier League <laughs> or to yes. play uh, whatever. So I think that it's a good opportunity for them to show up that they can match this level and that we can we can give a game to 20. In or for they also, eller hur? Yeah, but as a coach, I'm getting older, so you know it's different. I take the <laughs> the game in a different in a in a different way. For me, it's more. I like Dutch football, and I was mm. living in Netherlands for six, seven months, mm. and I think uh, it's fun. Dutch football, they are brave. They mm. play a lot of one v ones. Mm. They defend in a way that sometimes looks a bit sloppy, but that's yeah. the way. Yes. And I think it will be a, a nice a nice test to see where we are. När du när du håller teamtal lag snacket med laget inför matchen. Så kan ni på, påminna om att vi sålde slut, eller man sålde slut biljetterna på noll tid för att komma dit. Och det är cirka 1500-2000 som är kvar här hemma som skulle vilja vara där nere för att se dem spela. Så att spela för hjärtat. Vi är många som, som, mm. som önskar att vi hade fått vara på plats som inte får vara på, på plats tyvärr. Jag vet att att de kommer att vara så kommittade att försöka ge en bra spel för alla de som kommer att vara på plats. Och som jag har sagt. We are always so proud to represent Hammarby. When we play away, I don't know, three weeks ago we played in Uppsala. <laughs> it was amazing. It was like playing at home. So we know how much this club means for, for all of you. And trust me, that is something that we try to remind always and, and to play for. At the end, I think the ones who ha we have been professional for, for some time now, and for instance, we played during the Corona time in empty stadiums. Then I think that all of us will realize even more Mm. We play. We play for the fans. We want to, and even though I'm sad that, uh, not sad, but I need to respect that sometimes you might have another opinion about me, or, <laughs> or so, we want. <laughs> now, now I'm pushing you, but it's okay. <laughs> no, I, I think I, I might be more critical actually, but I'm, that, I'm, I'm being very. Calm. That's good. <laughs> but, but but you know what I mean. All the players, all the yes. people who we work on this, we want to make you happy, guys. No. We work for this. We work with the responsibility, uh, but sometimes we manage, and you fans, you need to be emotional. And when we lose, it's fine that you push us, and that's the game. Vi börjar ju röra oss mot slutet, men du hade ju klämt in en ja, liten varfråga. Ja, vi hoppar det. Men är, vi, är det så? Nej, jag vet inte. Vi kan, vi, var, ja eller nej? <sighs> yeah. We only have about two hours more, so. so. <laughs> no, no, no. I will, I will try to be as quick as I can. I don't like var. Okay. I think it's a sloppy discussion if we like or not. That's okay. my opinion. Okay. So I do agree that I don't like VAR, but if all Europe, all the world is implementing VAR at some moment, unless we are like uh, the last uh, yes. country, I think it's going to happen. Okay. Then I think it's, it's a healthy discussion to decide if VAR should be implemented, how should be implemented and so on. But It's a challenge for, for instance, the referees. For us, the players, we need to take a talk with the players this week mm. 
about guys. It's going to be VAR. Mm. So get ready to get a stop in the middle of the game, two minutes, because they need to check mm. a situation. Mm. But uh, if you ask me personally, do I like VAR? No. Okay. Ja, förlåt, förlåt, en till. Jag måste bara... Ja, ja, ja. <laughs> sista, men, sista. Men, men en grej som jag personligen tycker är helt... Jag vet, det är intressant att höra dig som tränare, men som det har blivit nu de senaste åren, att när en spelare är skadad eller lägger sig ner, att de måste få behandling på planen om man stoppar spelet. Jag tänker, nu, nu, här, nu tar jag lite här från en annan podd, Niklas Hilbrandt heter man va, som tog upp det. Jag tyckte att det var en jättebra jämförelse att till exempel att, att spelare med kramp, man lägger sig ner, man får behandling på plan, spelarna får gå ut och dricka vatten och vila. Om en motståndare får kramp, det betyder ju att du och ditt lag har överbelastat den kanten. Eller ni, ni har haft en taktik att jobba mot den här spelaren så att han får kramp. Och helt plötsligt får laget sätta sig ner och få en fördel. Och då, och då drog han den jämförelsen som jag tyckte var rätt bra. Om man är ett maratonlopp. Och så helt plötsligt så får tvåan kramp. Då stannar man inte i loppet att ettan får stanna och vänta inte sen har fått behandling. Och det är lite så i fotboll. Samtidigt vet jag att vi har ju maskat lite också. Satt oss ner och fått behandling. Men är, måste man få behandlingen på plan? Jag, vad, vad tänker du som tränare där? Look, I think that first of all I like to play a football where this cynicality, where all this, it's reduced to the minimum. I would like to just think about the spectator. Uh, and for myself, when I'm watching the game, I want active game. It's so boring where there's a lot of interruptions, a team that constantly is trying to delay, to waste time. That's why I'm quite happy that since the last World Cup, they are adding more time. Now yes. we can see the Norsvenska. I think it's a positive thing that now have eight, seven, nine minutes over mm. instead of just three. Mm. Because I think that when, for us as a team, for instance, we try to play football, play a positive football, play mm. the most. I think that is, if not, we are giving an advantage to the team that is breaking the rules. And I think that the ref main mission mm is to avoid that there is a team that tries to take advantage by breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. It's their choice to break the rules, but then they need to be punished by it. Yes. Yes. So yes. a way to get punished is uh, adding extra time. Mm -hmm. So for instance, with the cramps, in Spain, with the coaches, we have always an ethical code that is before the game, we shake hands and we say, if there is an injury, mm -hmm. I'm going to throw the ball out or not. So then we know. Okay. And I always say, I will not throw the ball out. Because if I throw the ball when someone is saying that he's cramping, yes. I'm allowing the cynicality. So then the decision is on the ref. And I think that as long as you communicate this before the game, is a is a sportsmanship uh, behavior. Is a ethically we are good. It's not that I'm trying to take advantage because you have one player on the ground. Mm. But then we need to agree that the ref is the one taking the decision. This is for me the best way to play as much active time as we can. If then there is a team that takes advantage of all the situations that every goal kick takes, I don't know, and then every throw in, this is up to the ref. There is not so much that we can do. Mm. But I like to play as much active game as we can, 100%. Men det måste vara frustrerande, för det dödar ju momentum i matcherna. It's frustrating, but what mm. we can do, then mm. what we say to the players is keep the focus. Yes. And we spoke a lot about resilience and momentum. Mm. Resilience moment is when things are not going in our way mm. and we need to kind of survive. But we do it through the game, through some tactical tools to make sure that we turn to get a momentum. And when we have a momentum, we know that there are teams that are good at delaying or breaking this momentum and are teams that are not as good. But this, yeah. is, this is art of the game. I think that it will be very frustrating to play, for instance, against Italian teams yes. are so good on this cynicality or yeah. some South American. But yes. Nu, nu ska jag försöka vara tyst. <laughs> Nej, men jag tänkte vi har gått på over. ett tag nu. Ja, precis. Så jag tänkte vi, vi ska tacka våra patrons som har ställt upp och, och boosta så att vi har råd att vara här och sända. Eh, och det är Antonios Lagavardos, Lotta på B305, Gröna Jägan, Martin Jonsson, Paulsons penis, Mark, Marcus Glad, Erik Henriksson och Sigge på Söder. Vi tackar er och alla som stöttar. Så ska vi ta ett litet eftersur, men eh, vi tackar för att du kom hit och eh, så krossar du tvämte så du slipper bli några arga meddelanden på sociala medier. <laughs> det är okej, okay, det blir bra. Ja. Ja, men tack att du kom Lycka till. Och tack. Faktiskt, jag har... Det är för dig, guys. Så från alla staff och från de players för Bayern Podden, okej. Okay. So this is for you. You can you can read it if you want. Yeah. Thank you. Let's go straight on the wall. Come on, take the trophy and set it on the wall. Yeah, I really thank you.
sitter här inne. Varsågod. Tack. Tack så mycket. Ska vi Tack Martin.